I'm uh, Danny Lusberg. I'm responsible for the IoT product line within Technicolor. Okay, we have the slides up. And I'm also our representative on the board of the All Scene Alliance, where I um, am lucky enough to serve as president. So um, let me first introduce uh, our company for those that don't know us, um, Technicolor as a brand. On the next slide, please. Um, or we can do it with this. Okay. Technicolor as a brand is probably best known for those that are a little bit older and you know used to watch cartoons on a Saturday morning. Um, but we do a bit, a bit more than that. It's the same brand, it's the same company, but we have three main business units. One of them is uh, the what we call entertainment services. So we do color grading, we do visual effects for movies, we touch about 80% of all of the Hollywood blockbusters. So uh, that's a very important part of our business. Uh, we also have a, a business unit called technology, which is basically IP and licensing, patents, brands, things like that. And then we have the business unit that I represent, which is called Connected Home. And Connected Home is one of the world's largest manufacturers of uh, residential gateways and set-top boxes. You'll ra rarely see our brand on any of our products, but um, usually they'll, they'll, they'll be in, in almost every country, almost every uh, place around the world. All right. So I'm going to keep the amount of slides on the, on the company to a minimum, but just, you know, we have a pretty global footprint, um, 16,000 employees worldwide. I think we cover every continent except for Africa. Middle East maybe counts as that. Um, so um, that, this is across the three business units. Um, uh, most important R&D centers are in Europe and in the U.S., uh, although we have a big uh, facility in Beijing and China as well. Um, and this is uh, what Connected Home is about for us. This is our day-to-day -day job, making sure that this horrible mess of logos and acronyms and you know standards and things like that um, are presented to the user in a somewhat acceptable way. Uh, we, have to, we have the pleasure of trying to untie this knot and turning it into a product. So we're, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, we're really exposed to the problems of connecting things uh, together. And of course, as far as the Internet of Things is concerned, that only adds to the problem uh, for us, which is good, because that, that's how we make money. Um, but um, how does this type of problem, you know, um, transpose itself to uh, smart cities? It's an IoT conference. I'm not going to be uh, the umpteenth guy that's going to show you stats and figures. I think we've seen a lot of those already. So uh, I'm going to skip this. But um, this one I do want to talk about. Um, as I mentioned, in the home, connectivity is a real challenge. The last thing you want to do is expose all of these uh, logos to consumers. Not only that, not only is it a question of complexity, but it's also a question of cost. Because, yes, we all need to put all of these chips in and, and, and um, you know, software stacks um, into our boxes, but it only adds cost. It's a checklist item. We need to have it in order to be competitive. But in reality, it's very hard to make a return on investment on those things. Um, the situation, if you expand this to smart cities, is slightly different. It's definitely not as unwieldy as, as it is in the connected home where you know we, we do the, the majority of our business. But you can see already that with some of these you know low power WAN technologies that are emerging, uh, there's there's a battleground there as well, right? Um, so. Just from a connectivity point of view, you can already see what we've seen in the connected home replic replicating itself on larger scale for smart cities, connected cities, things like that as well. Um, beyond just connectivity, it's also a question about interoperability. Um, I hate the fact that we put Esperanto um, on the slide here because it's not necessarily a good representation of something that, is a f <laughs> that has been successful. Um, but we do think that you need a universal language, uh, not just for the connected home, but for IoT in general. So we think that's, we realize that's an ambitious scope um, and you need to start somewhere and connected home is as good, as good a place as any, probably one of the better places to start with. But in terms of interoperability, the, you know, the data model that you use when you're talking about a specific piece of equipment needs to be um, in some way or form standardized, or you need to at least have a standardized translation units to each of these uh, components of the ecosystem. Um, and we are 100% confident that the same problem uh, extends to smart cities and, and towns as well. And then last but not least, there's a, there's a problem of scale as well. 
Um, being very active in the connected home, we uh, can experience firsthand the tremendous amounts of data that some of our more um, innovative customers, uh, which are typically service providers and pay TV operators, some of our more innovative customers are generating tons and tons of data on a daily basis that we need to manage, that we need to crunch, that we need to do analytics on, reporting, and things like that. If you scale this up to a city and you want to converge all of that in, in, in individual use cases, you can, of course, imagine that the problem becomes much, much, much worse. So those are a number of... Um, of the challenges that we see. Um, one of the um, things that we're trying to do to solve this problem is participate in something called the All Scene Alliance. Um, you know, Jeffrey, the speaker before me, already uh, mentioned All Join as one of those uh, languages that uh, is hoping to be or is vying to be the universal language for Internet of Things devices in the home and uh, in the city. Um, it's an open source project. It's tremendously successful in terms of uh, membership. We have, I think, 190 members at this point. We're adding roughly 10 new members every single month. Uh, some of the names that you'll see on our website are uh, very well known, such as Microsoft, Qualcomm, um, uh, Panasonic, Sony, you know, big CE brands, uh, AT&T, um, Vodafone, so you know, service service providers. It's a very healthy mix of. So we're particularly happy with the progress that the All Scene Alliance is making in terms of um, creating an ecosystem of um, or a partnership um, between different companies in different verticals in the broader IoT ecosystem. So we think we can be really successful with that, but we're going to have to solve a number of problems as well. It's not just a matter of you know, gathering like-minded people in a room and, and, and talking about what we all think is going to be uh, the next big paycheck for each of our companies. right? So what Alljoin tries to solve, Alljoin is an open source framework that is managed by the All Scene Alliance. Um, um, what Alljoin tries to solve is this discoverability of devices, identification of services that run on those devices, remote control, whether that be uh, on the same network or on a remote network, managing uh, interoperability between different platforms, um, providing bridges um, and adaptation layers towards devices that aren't all joint native, um, cover all kinds of protocols, all kinds of physical layer protocols, um, of course, exchange information, and last but not least, uh, security, uh, which we think is a fundamental um, problem to solve in the Internet of Things. And Technicolor, as a company, is, is very proud to have made one of the more significant contributions to the All Scene Alliance with uh, what is called the Security 2.0 data model, um, which you should all check out because it's, it's really, we think it's, it's, it's um, uh, an example of a best practice to do security in an Internet of Things environment. Um, so yeah, that's, um, you, you could think of um, all of the verticals that make up IoT as individual beehives. Um, they need to r solve their own problems. They, typically, a lot of the problems that they're solving are going to overlap with those problems that are solved in other beehives. So in order to scale this up, we need to identify those commonalities um, and uh, unify the solution that we bring for all of those. Okay. Um, I think th this is a really important one. So I want to I want to take uh, a minute or two to um, talk about this. We truly believe that at the center of IoT is not a thing. It's also not the internet. At the center of IoT, it is the user, the person who uh, gets bombarded with all of the information and data that is generated uh, by these devices. We strongly believe that for the Internet of Things to be truly successful, we need to step away from a thing-centric thinking, and we need to more specifically step away from a situation in which um, you sell a product and tie a service to that product. Um, you know, we all know the examples that are currently successful in IoT, um, and, and where there's this one-on-one -on -one relationship uh, of a very obvious service implemented on top of a specific device. If I have a thermostat, yes, I'll be able to control it remotely. I'll be able to uh, program it. It'll be able to learn from my behavior and things like that. But the real innovative use cases are going to come from 
multiple devices interacting with each other and services being built on top of those multiple devices. And given the fact that it's very unlikely that those services and those devices are going to all come from the same supplier, the same manufacturer, the same service provider, it is incredibly important that we decouple all of this, which is why we need that universal language, which is why we need a good security model that centers around the user. Because if you think about it, a user will be the one that is responsible for enabling a service on top of a given set of devices or a service to interoperate with another host of services that might already be active. That's not something that you can centrally control except if you're that user, right? Um, so um, very important, decouple devices from the services. Um, so what we did, uh, we make a service. We don't make any of those devices with the exception of our gateways and our setup boxes, which admittedly are connected home devices. Um, and the service is called Eyes. Um, we started from the home because, you know, connected home is our uh, area of expertise. Um, but, and you can think of it as a, as a typical smart home solution, you know, you know the eye controls and things like that of the world, right? Um, but we took a different angle. Um, we made it user-centric, right? Um, what we did is instead of um, talking about, you know, your security camera or your connected light bulbs or your thermostat or things like that, we talk about virtual characters or digital concierges, as, is, as it's called on this slide. You see all of the uh, logos of... Uh, um, personnel, if you will, that are depicted on the slide. And that is the main way that the user interacts with the system. So instead of talking about how your security camera does motion detection and can send you a notification whenever it detects motion in a given room, you could talk about your nanny or your nurse who monitors your kids or your elderly par parents and provides you feedback on how they're doing. We believe that presenting use cases in this way is going to open up IoT for the mass market, for people who aren't necessarily interested in this whole swath of new technology that we're introducing into the homes, right? Um, and it puts the user at the center of things, which maps nicely to the rest of the story that we're trying to tell. So these are some of the services that we're selling as part of the uh, EYES framework. Caretaker, uh, you know, it's... it's um, um, gardening and making sure that things in your home um, uh, are routinely updated, things like maintenance to your boiler and, and you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, the doorman who will take packages for, for you, you know, receive packages and make sure that they're signed off for and secure them for you. Uh, guard and nanny and nurse that I already uh, mentioned. So the idea is that we mirror what we know if you're a very rich person, you have all of these people working for you already, you know, we're, we're making this available for the broader public in a digital way. And so here are a number of uh, examples where we started from our home expertise and partner with a number of big players um, for um, more smart city oriented use cases. Um, the, you know, the theme of this presentation is supposed to be how the, the home is the source of all of this information and how you can extend that to smart cities. One of the people that we work with is Continental, uh, who is what is called a tier one uh, manufacturer. Those are the guys that make, they make tires, but they also make uh, the head units that go in cars. They, their equipment is bought by the, you know, the, the BMWs and the Peugeots uh, of the world. Um, and um, the application that we built with them is called Copilot, because it's a representation of something that you might know. So it doesn't only provide you with guidance in terms of uh, you know, where you need to go, navigation instructions and things like that, um, but it also provides you with information on how your connected home is doing and how the people that are interacting with that connected home are doing at any given point in time. Um, so for instance, you might be on your way to, to visit grandma um, and your kid is uh, done early with, with school, you might get a notification, pick him up, get automatically redirected to where you have to pick him up, uh, send out a message to grandma that you're gonna be 10 minutes late because you had to take another route, right? Um, those are the kind of things that we're trying to introduce there. Um, this is a, a, a proof of concept that we demonstrated, and I think, uh, I'm not that good with auto shows, but there was a big one. Uh, in the middle of October, so that's where we uh, uh, did the first demonstration of this integration between the uh, Continental platform, which is entirely cloud-based, and our EYES solution, which is mostly 
um, around the equipment that we gather and the intelligence that we create in the connected home. Here, what you're saying is a sort of a doorbell use case, uh, which uh, ties into the doorman service that I mentioned before, where you can see on your um, HUD or on your um, you know, entertainment display in your car who is at the door, what the reasons for being there might be. Okay. Another one, and this is a very interesting one, is um, something that we did together with uh, Suez, um, who is a, a French energy company, obviously. Um, and um, this is uh, an initiative that we're doing in um, Asia Pacific. Um, part of the uh, ICE solution and the uh, caretaker is about energy consumption and about managing uh, that throughout the day, optimizing your cost, but also making sure that uh, devices don't wear before they, uh, b before it's their time. Um, Suez has, so we're doing this in a, in a large building, um, Suez has um, energy consumption meters in that building, but they only have information to what each individual apartment in that building consumes. So uh, for select users who opt in and want to share more information in exchange for uh, the service that we're providing here, um, so, so it's already going in the direction of the data economy kind of uh, business model, um, for those users, they uh, can get additional information and use that as a representation of how energy consumption uh, happens in more detail uh, throughout the rest of the building as well. So for them, it's very important to optimize uh, how they deliver energy to the building, how they need to scale their infrastructure and things like that. Um, but for the consumer, it's very important to optimize how they use their devices, okay? <coughs> Um, this is, this is uh, to my mind, this is a very good example of how technology that is never going to be sold by Suez is being used by those guys and information that is captured by those devices is being used by those guys to provide a better uh, service towards consumers everywhere and not just the people that are subscribing to uh, eyes. And the last example that I want to give also in Asia Pacific is um, a, a connected care example. Um, so, um, part of the use cases that we have, or one of the services that we provide with eyes is called the nurse. The nurse is really targeted at elderly care, um, so stay at home, elderly people, um, obviously very important that they can stay at home for as long as they can to minimize the cost on uh, society, but also just to make sure that they have as comfortable lives as possible and they can feel independent and um, you know, um, um, don't necessarily need to go to, to a, um, a care facility when it's not uh, absolutely 100% necessary. Um, the equipment that we're uh, providing to those people is non-medical, right? Absolutely non-medical. We, we are a co connectivity company. We, we build some services. We don't want to get uh, into, that, into that area because it's, you know, regulations and things like that. Way too difficult for a company like us. But we're working with the local regulator there um, where they are um, enabling doctors and caregivers to um, add additional to devices to the solution, things like bl blood pressure and uh, thermometer thermometers, I'm sorry about that, um, that are sanctioned by the government to be compatible with the most widespread uh, connected home system in that, in that specific country. Uh, and if they um, buy that, they can get things like tax deductions, uh, they can get uh, cheaper medical care from the government or higher quality Medicare, medical care while still uh, staying at home, right? Um, so again, we're starting from a connected home solution, working with partners in the rest of the ecosystem to scale that up to a much larger scale uh, where the government is directly involved uh, and insurance companies are directly involved in uh, augmenting that service. Um, that's the last example uh, that I wanted to give. Uh, if you want to know more about our solution called Eyes, um, you can visit www.eyesyourlife.com. Um, if you want to know more about the technology that uh, enables this, at least from a connected home perspective, allseenalliance.org, because um, this is an all-seen compliant uh, service that we're building here. Um, which allows us to easily integrate with all of those third parties. Thank you very much. Yeah.